and uh, I do need encouragement. I do need encouragement. And uh, a warm welcome to all of you in the Zoom and in the church, okay? Uh, actually, I'm quite blessed or I'm quite touched by the worship today, especially the first song. I did not know it was so long already, I did not cry, but the first song brought me to tears. And the uh, Holy Spirit seems to reveal to me that our God is hurting also because of the COVID and the pandemic around us. God does not want us to suffer because we are his precious children. So I do not know why, but it just touched my heart. So many months, many months, I did not cry during the worship time. This is the first time of the many months. Thank you, because you really made my heart feel that I'm human again. Okay. Uh, let us bow down for a word of prayer, because I need Holy Spirit to be with me. Thank you, Father, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. You know the deep thoughts of each one of us. You know the deep cries of each one of us. During this pandemic, Lord Jesus, we, inside our heart, Lord Jesus, we are crying for your comfort. We are crying for your our guidance and leading, Lord Jesus. You say you love us, Lord Jesus. Tell us what we are going to do, Lord Jesus. Speak to us, Lord Jesus, how to receive your blessing, Lord Jesus, during this time. And let each one of us feel your presence, Lord Jesus. As I stand in the pulpit, Lord Jesus, I just submit myself unto you. Let the words that come forth from my mouth is from you and not from me. Because you come and lead, let the Holy Spirit lead me in speaking every word that bring life to the people around us, Lord Jesus. Because we need your living water, we need your living words to inspire us, to bring us to life, to bring us closer to you, Lord Jesus. This is a time, Lord Jesus, we want to cling on to you, we want to really cling on to you, Lord Jesus. You have said that you will not force us and not leave us Lord Jesus this is a time this is a time revealed to us what you want to do with us Lord Jesus because you are the water we are the clay here we are Lord Jesus speak to us speak to us revive us oh bring us closer to you Lord Jesus I commit the rest of the time unto you let this mouthpiece be in your mouthpiece piecing unto you let your will be done Come and speak through me. This humble vessel, you're in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This morning, when I look at the screen, I noted that it is blessed. The team of 2224 for our church is blessed and to bless. It's easy to say than done to bless and to bless. First of all, we have to be blessed by the Lord. How can we be blessed by the Lord if we just station we just station our life as what we are right now? In whatever state we are, we are not moving, we are not going forward. We just stay put. Then how God is going to come in your life, intervene in our life to bring to be to bless us to be a vessel for his use. Because in everything, in every commandment, that is something that is an action, that is an obedience, that is a faith. God has said that, if you love me, obey my commandments. Does it mean that obey, you sit down, just obey with your heart? No, it is with actions. That means each one of us has to go forth. We have to, we have to move out from our comfort zone and go forth. When we go forth, we are going into the territory, the unknown territory. We are fearful. To be honest, we are fearful. But we choose to believe in him. We choose to listen to him. We choose to follow him. Then we have to make the first step of faith. The first step of faith is to into unknown, trusting that he will lead us out of darkness. He will not forsake us nor leave us because in Psalm 23, he said that when we are, when we are in the dark, when we are in the deep valley. He is there with us. He, the rock, comforts us. We, why we say comfort? Because we are, we are, we are in, a, in what we call, we are facing a lot of challenges. You will not 
feel the comfort if you are just stay put, very complacent in your life. And, and uh, there's nothing happened, there's no up and down. A lot of comfort, the Holy Spirit that He's so comfortable will not be in you because comfort comes when you are in a suffering state. You will feel that the comfort of the Lord, the healing touch of the Lord is with you. That's why we have to move out of our comfort zone. So now, today, we are going to see how God is going to work in each one of us. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take a uh, basing on two scripture. Matthew, uh, Matthew, uh, before I go to Matthew 14, when we say we obey our Lord's commandments, there are two commandments that God asks us clearly settle down that we have, each one of us is going to do. That is the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Let us go to Matthew 28. That is a Great Commandment there. Everyone knows about it, but we now do refresh and read it word by word. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus has a full authority. Therefore, he instructs us, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach this new disciple to obey all commandments I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you even to the end of the age. This is one of the commandments. We have to reach out to those people in need and set the example for them. Set an example. He said, teach. When you teach, you have to set an example. Okay? Then we go to Mark 12, 29, verse 29 and 31. And this is one of the greatest commandments. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel. The Lord our God is the one and the holy Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than this. So when you read, you see this too, there is some action involved. There is some action involved. It's not only believing. You have to move, you have to go forth. Be courageous, knowing that the Lord is with us. Be courageous and move out of your comfort zone and, and let God transform us before you can experience His multiplication, His miracles in our life. That's why I'd love to, I'd love to base today's message, be courageous and move forward. Because during this time, during the, uh, this uh, pandemic and uh, this uh, COVID, when the whole world, everywhere around us is so uncertain. And we have so much information, which yet we cannot determine the truth of it. We can't. We just receive, we just pass. Sometimes it may not be true, okay? So we are in a confusion state. So now, the question right now is, he said that, you must go forth. There is an action there. So how are we going to go forth? So I'm going to bring, to bring you to two passages of feeding where we see how God works miracles with the little he has, the availability, and also how because of the faith of the obedience, miracles happen. Okay? Matthew 14 13, verse 13 to 20. I'm not going to touch, I'm going to read that one. And Matthew 15, 32 to 39. I'm not going to read because you all know about this um, feeding of the 5,000 and feeding of the 4,000, okay? But there are certain things there that we need to take note, okay? We need to take note. There are some similarity there. The two uh, the two, uh, what we we'll call, uh, the two passages have some similarity there. God shows his power. He said, he, he so because there are two fishes, one, in one instance, there are only two fish, 
and five loaves of bread. Another instance is some few fish and, uh, and uh, this uh, seven loaves of bread. Remember, this is the lunch of one of the small boy. Okay, it is not this is not big fish. It's small fish. Okay, so if you imagine yourself in that situation, so such a small, so little, what are we going to do? You would say, ah, if God asks you to give it to me, you will say, no, I got. I don't think you can. I, I don't believe. I will turn away. Or if we turn away. And we don't trust God. What will happen? No miracles will happen. The same thing. No miracle will happen, right? Because we don't, we don't believe. Because we use our human human mind to assess the situation. The human mind, our human mind, is not God's mind. Our human mind has been deposited with a lot of things from the past. When we grow up, our parents will say, "Okay, you must study." You don't study, you don't, don't get good grade, you cannot succeed in life. Then, uh, from so on, the, the, the parents will say, okay, you have, to go, you have to study very hard, this is one thing, and you have to excel, only people will respect you, excel in society. And uh, you are so fearful, you tell, you, the parents will tell, don't do that, because people will criticize you. A lot of all this information has been has been what we got deposited in us through the years of growth, through the years of when we're growing up. And this kind of thing is, is, uh, is with us. And this kind of things are in a way, is a stumbling block to our growth, our spiritual growth in life. Because we always think of the past. We always think of the past. This is what it is. Our belief system, which has been built from small, is with us. Okay? So sometimes when we come, when we have... Uh, we, we res if somebody responds in a certain way, we have to understand them. That is their belief system. That's why God said, you have to have compassion heart and understand. Because God said in Proverbs, you need an understanding person to draw the wisdom from, the, from your heart. Your wisdom is written on your heart, but you need the spirit of understanding to draw it out so that you have compassion over the person, how he feels and why, why he said like that, so that you would just forgive. That's why I say, God said, forgive many, many times. But the time you forgive 70 times 7, you have forgotten all the, the rest of the issue already. Okay? So now, come back to this. You see, if I were in that situation, I would say, no, the first thing, actually, is I don't believe God can do such a miracle. He has not done it before. It was not in my life. Because my equation in life is one plus one. It never one plus one equal to one plus one equal to two, but it never one plus one equal to four. But in spiritual world, we do not see things with our eyes. Our eyes is different. Our eyesight is different. We will have to have the mind of Christ to know what is in front of us, what Christ wants us to do. We must have the Holy Spirit in us. That's why God said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Remember, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not be with you. When we say we grieve the Holy Spirit, is that we disobey the prompting of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to go forth. We say, no, we cannot. No, Father, we cannot. Father Lord, we cannot. I can't do it because I, I don't think I'm capable. I'm not qualified. This kind of thing come and block you. And, and this is what we call unbelief, the belief system in you. Okay? So this is very important that we have to do to, to what we call let God transform us. Transform us. How God transform us? God had to transform us through, through our first step of faith. If you need God to transform you, you have to put forth your step of faith and go forth, even though you do not know what is in front of you. I do not know. A lot of times I do not know. And I obey, and I realize that things are different. It's not what I thought it would be. Because whenever we, we, we reach any decision, we will think of what will happen. Our usual mind will think of what will happen if I do this and do that. Or it will come like that. Then it blocks us. We would dare to move. We dare not move. And uh, I learned through experience, I learned through experience that I have to let go of my past, just like Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 says that, 
My old self has been crucified with Christ on the cross. The life that I live right now, I live in Christ. I live in full obedience unto Christ who loved me and died for me. That is what, that is what we call, you acknowledge that he really died for us and took, because uh, uh, Isaiah say, Jesus Christ took upon all our iniquity and all our diseases and sicknesses. You believe. You believe and you trust him. So you will go forth and believe in him. Just like his disciple in this two passage that they just believe. They don't want to use their mind. They question, how can did, one of them they ask her, how can we have, how can we use this one and feed the five thousand? Four thousand. You can't because our, our limited mind says that you can't. But we have when we come to a spiritual world, our mind cannot be our we have limited mind, but we do not confine the mind of Christ, the work of Christ, we just go forth and see what is happening. That's why in, uh, in uh, Philippians, I think in Philippians, let me see where is it. Huh? In Philippians 3, 13, 14, this is what I love very much. Maybe we go to Philippians 3, chapter 3, 13 to 14. Maybe you can turn your Bible. Chapter 3, 13 to 14. This is what Paul said. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. I have not achieved the crown. I'm still striving down. I'm still striving forward. I'm still working. Even though in the all of us, in the eyes of all of us, he is complete. He's almost complete because he has a whole Christ within him. Okay? This is a greater blessing of all when you have Christ within you. Forgetting the past. And looking forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting the past. That is what I said. Forgetting what you learned last time. What you, what you, what misconception about yourself. Forgetting all this. And lay down at your back. Don't talk about this anymore. Because right now, your identity, our identity is in Christ. It's not in the past. We should not let the past pull us backward. But we will allow God to pull us forwards by Knowing that our identity is in Him. When we come to the cross, He has taken all our iniquity and all our sin and diseases. We are new creation. We are the new wine skin with new wine in us. Trusting that, Lord, we have the confidence to move forward. Okay? We have the faith to move forward. God said, faith without work is dead. There's always an action there. When, I believe when you start to work, when you start to move, of course, you have to pray before you move. When you start to move that time, you, you, you are scared. Actually, everyone of us are scared if it's an unknown. But somehow or rather, it turned out differently. This is my experience, as I said. The only thing God asks you is that obey my commandments. The word obey involves action. Action on our part. Action on our part. So, when you say this one, you see, I press on, he continued, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. We are empowered, you see, we are not, why you say that you should not be scared? Because as we move out of our comfort zone into the unknown, okay, we are moving together with the Holy Spirit because we obey the instruction and the Holy Spirit is with us and we are empowered to work it. By our own power, we can never do it. I can tell you, we can never do it. Only by prayer and prayer and seeking Him and also knowing that He is with us. Of course, you can pray, Lord, if you're not going with me, I'm not going there. Okay? You ask for His presence. You go forth. And I can tell you, life is not the same anymore. Because if you want to be blessed and to bless other people, you have to be changed you have to be transformed by our God, by Jesus Christ, by His Holy Spirit. We have to transform into another new person. Then our mind will be different. Our mind will be the thing we see will be different, entirely different. We will see things as what the world sees. Like you say, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We must have the perspective of God. We must have it. How do you have perspective of God? 
we learn we learn about Jesus Christ from the Bible. We learn about his example of the faith from the Bible. Everything we learn from the Bible, every word is it's written down through the scripture. We know about God. You tell me, you say, okay, I love God. How do you love a person whom you cannot see? I can't touch God. I cannot see. I can only, by dwelling in His word daily, I come to know about Him. And He lives within me, as He said. He will write His words on our heart. It's not the circumcision of our heart like Moses. It's the circumcision of the work of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Our heart will not be the same anymore if you allow Him to deal with you. You allow Him to, to work in you. And you respond to His word, come. He said, come. All those weary and heavy laden, come, I give you rest. Come. He always asks you to come. The choices is, are always made by all of us. You make the choice, God will not force you. God will not force you. God wants you to come willingly to Him. Then, if you have the faith, you obey, you have the faith, trust in Him, miracle work. This is how the, five, the message in feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000 happened. They managed to feed 5,000, 4,000 with so little thing. So it come back. You will ask yourself, stand here, you ask yourself. You will tell God, God, what do I have? What do I have? What is the Last point in my life, what are the, what are the talents in my life that you want to use? Of? Never, never underestimate because you, each one of us is given a talent. Each one of us is what we call it, created by God uniquely. I'm different from all of you. My background is, besides my background is different, each one of us is different because there is a plan. God said, when you were in your mother's womb, he already knows you, okay? He knows what kind of plan he has for you. He already knows you. So the thing is that you do not underestimate your own capabilities. And what God wants is our ability because he knows. You see, all of us, I always imagine, God's... Uh, God's plan of salvation is always a big jigsaw puzzle, okay? Always a jigsaw puzzle. Maybe at one time, I'm wrong, but he wants to transform me, he wants to change me. You put me in another place where I will have a lot of adjustment. He's changing me. He's putting people in my life to change me, to let me know my weaknesses. Also that he will work. You put me something there and I feel so uncomfortable because it does not fit me. But that is what God wants. He will put it there. And maybe you'll round put in the square, so and later on, you become another, your, your, all your witnesses will be straight away. Then later on, you have another witnesses, you put another place. This is what God is doing. God always put things in our life. And when you do not have this encounter with God, either you are not sensitive or either you refuse to accede to His, his instruction, obey His instruction. Let yourself spiritually attune to his instructions and attune to his calling. Because every one of us is changing. If you don't allow God to change, you will be stable and like any piece of this thing, nothing there. You just ear in, ear out like that. No changes. But remember, we are alive. We have life. We have the life of Christ in us. We need to change. God is calling us to change so that we can bless other people. We must be some we tell them must be a transformation. There must be a transformation before God can multiply. God is a God of transformation and God is also a God of multiplication. God can multiply. If you don't have, you don't have the quality, I mean, never mind. To to suffering, to whatever you work with the power of the Holy Spirit, you become somebody who has that kind of qualities. Honestly, if you are not for, if you are, don't have the spirit of forgiveness, maybe you easily anger. This is what I was before. Right now, I'm also very, but I'm still learning. You, you learn to aware that, oh, I cannot do that. Even he, he'll tell you, he'll give you situation to allow you to, to, to flare up, to control your temper. 
And you had sometimes that's why it says Paul say, in every situation, in every circumstances, give thanks. This is what we call give thanks. Even in your suffering, you give thanks because there is a purpose. There is a divine purpose in all everything happening in our life because He is in control. We are not in control. Unless you're willing, willing to let go of the past. You see, uh, actually, if you ask me, uh, sometimes we dare not move forward because why? We are scared of criticism. We are seeking, you know, we tend to, we tend to value people's opinion on us very much. I mean, this is a culture, okay? This is a culture. We have to let go because actually we have to seek God's consent, not people's consent, not people's opinion. So what happened is that you, you will, you scared. Ayo, what is he going to say? Ah? Wow, they will criticize me in this way. You, you please consent what kind of criticism you will have. This is worse still. This was then rather than you listen, okay? But you look at this. I just tell you about a son, a story about the son. And the father was going from one town to another. Maybe you heard this story before. And they're riding on the donkey. There's only one donkey. So what happened is, sorry, I have to take it. What happened is that he let the son ride on the donkey and he walked at the side together with the son. So along the way, somebody commented, oh, yeah, the young man should come down, let the father go on the donkey. So, okay, they obey. Listen, human, human opinion. So the father ride on the donkey and the son walked. Some, uh, along the way, when they go further along the way, somebody commented, Oh, why the father allowed the son to walk? He's so young, the healthy father should walk. So then he put back the son on the, on the donkey. Okay? Am I right? No, oh, the father. Let the father on the donkey. Forgot to remember. So the father is healthy. So the son came down and walked. The father on. Then later on, they say, Wow, why you make use of the donkey like that? Okay? Donkey had better use than this. You know what happened in the end? The father had to carry the donkey and walk together with the son. Right now, this is, a, this is what we call the result of, of listening to, to human opinion, human criticism and follow. Because we are born differently. When you tell, if you, if you listen to all these things, you can never live. You know why? Because there are so many opinions, you must have your own. I, I am, I'm, uh, I have my own business, okay? And uh, I, I, will, I will tell my staff, okay? There are rules and regulations in this, uh, in this uh, firm, okay? You have to follow strictly. If I would listen to them, Okay, you give me one word, she give me one word. There will be confusion. There will be confusion, you don't know what to do. And you will have, you will spend most of the, prob most of the time spending in clearing the doubts, spending in uh, 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 clearing all the fighting, in the, uh, all the fighting, all the, all the disagreement in the, in, the, in the firm. So that's why you have, that's why we have to, we have to, Base our life on the word of God, which is not changing, which is not changing, which are always alive and there. He will never feel us, it's just that we feel him. Okay? So it is very important that, like I say, don't scare of criticism. Constructive criticism makes us grow. Okay? And, and uh, we, we do not, that's what yes, God also say. I think I remember that. Uh, it is a sin. It is a sin, if I'm not mistaken, of gossip in one of the gospel. It's a sin to gossip. It's a sin. So you know why gossip? When you gossip, the small problem becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And you, somebody pass to another person, pass to another person, it will be out of contest. Out of contest. Because in the end, you make another Christian or another person suffers silently and they don't know how to open their mouth. Okay? So that's why I, I remember there's one of the passage that sin, uh, gossip is a sin. 
okay? And also it spoils your life. Okay, now, that's why you have to ask yourself, ask and ask it God, God, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? I want to read uh, two passages which is not from the Bible, but which I came across and I usually do my devotion early in the morning with this too. I try to do what he said. He said, looking unto Jesus to go forth from ourselves. That means looking unto Jesus and forget our past and just move forward. He said, and to forget ourselves, our past, so that our darkness may free away before the brightness of his face. When God come into, when we look at God, his face is upon us, his countenance is upon us. So, so that our joy may be holy and our sorrow restrained, that he may cast us down and he may raise us up. He may cast us down. It is not a bit of roses. It is not a smooth journey. We will face, because he said he will suffer together with us. He said that. So what he meant is that, that life is not a bit of roses. We suffer, okay? He cuts us down and he may raise us up. That he may afflict us and that he may comfort us. Afflict us first and then he comfort us. That he may destroy us and that he may enrich us. That he may teach us to pray and that he may he may uh, answer our prayers that while leaving us in the world he leaves us in the world he does not take us up there he may separate us from it that means we are separate we are chosen by him and we are not we are in the world but not of the world we are special we are chosen by him we are the chosen one our life being hidden with him with jesus christ in god and our behavior bearing witness to him before men. So it is very important. He's saying that you forget yourself. You just strive forward and obey the commandments of the God of uh, commandments of God and just follow him. Because don't don't think that when you have God in you and you will have a big roses. No. God needs to transform us. God needs to change us. Remember that a lot of people they will they was they were thinking that okay. When I come to the cross, I say the sinner prayers, I'm safe. Full stop. No. It does not end there because there is a process of sanctification from there on. Okay? Never say that I am safe. I need to do nothing. No. You need to be a blessed vessel. Remember his supporters. We are the clay. He need, we need to be a blessed vessel for his use. Usually when we have our uh, when we are blessed in whatever way God wants to grant us, always remember, it is for His kingdom, for His use, and it's not for your own glory. Even when the Holy Spirit is in us, is enrich us, empower us, is to do a divine purpose, to let the God in us shine for them. Because holy, the 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 Holy Spirit come is not to enrich you alone. No man is an island. We need to work together. We need to go forth and be, a, be an example, be a shining star in the, in the Lord's eye. Because that's why he said, our behavior, bear witness to him before man. Our behavior, our behavior. We need the Holy Spirit, okay? And there's another one. I also always have devotion over this. He said, looking unto Jesus and receive from him, receive from him. That the other one is go for. Receive from him that the task and the cross each day. The task, the work he wants you to do, and the cross, carry the cross. And with the grace which is sufficient to carry the cross. He won't leave you alone. He give you sufficient grace to do it. He say he always said that my grace is sufficient for you. And to accomplish the task. That grace, the grace that enables me to be. The grace that enables me to be patient with his patient, his patient, active with his activity, loving with his love, never asking, never asking, what am I able for? But rather, what is he not able for? We won't ask what we cannot do. If we say what he can't do, God say, God can do everything. He's powerful. And waiting for his strength, which is made perfect in our own witnesses. 
This is in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Mm. So never, never judge yourself because none of us is a judge. God is a judge. Let God use us for his glory. Let God use us for his glory. Mm. Okay, we, well, I think we want to turn to Matthew 25, 14, talking about the talents, the three servants, you know, because uh, this is very important, you know why? As I say, we have given talent, we have given talent, and uh, each one of us, and you remember, these three, these three servants, this is a parable, uh, I think the master gave them different, uh, different quantities of gold and asked them to invest, okay? And uh, then one of them said, okay, I have invested so much and that is an increase. Let me see a parable. Let me read from that, Matthew 25. Okay. The parable of the three servants. This is a long passage, but uh, just bear with me. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five, five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you give me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I give you many more responsibility. Let us celebrate together. Okay? The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you give me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibility. Let us celebrate together. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I know you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. cultivate. I'm afraid I will lose your money, so I hide in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gather crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, this is what I want you all to pay attention. Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who, are, who use well what they are given, the talent that God given to us. Even more will be given. If we use it, we allow God to use it, we allow God to, to, to transform us to be a blessed vessel. They will have an abundance. You will have no lack. But those from those who do nothing, even while little, they will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into utter darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, you know, it is important you use it. You use it. If it's not, then God will take away. If you know how to sing, sing. If you know, come and come and sing. If you know how to uh, be a, a what we call a generous, ge uh, be a generous giver, go ahead and do it. And if you are, you you are caring people, take on some ministry. Take on some ministry because you want to bless and to bless, you have to do something. Okay. Okay, now we come to, uh, you see, even if the four, uh, fitting of the 4,000 and fitting of 5,000, there's something in there that we should not forget. Even, even Jesus have taken the, the little that they have, 
What did he do? He prayed. He prayed. It means that we need to come to the Lord, prayer, pray to the Lord. You see, when we come to the Lord, usually we come and say, okay, God, I want this. This is my item. Ta, 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 ta. Then when God don't answer, you say, God, you did not answer mine. After some time also did not answer, you start to, you, your, your faith waver. Waver. This is very important. When we come to God in prayer, there's one thing we have to remember. We are re-establishing our relation with God where there is a communication. We have communication with God. We want to have that kind of relationship with God. And we want to declare our dependence on Him. We want to know that He will tell Him that God, you are power. Because you see, at the end of your prayer, you always say, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Because you know that when you use a powerful name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is our intercessor. Then you will know that he will answer us. But sometimes, God may not answer you. God may not answer according to what you want. Then you will start to know that the will of God is revealed to you. He may not answer you according to what you want. But he may reveal to you his plan for you. So it may not be always what you say. Because all of us, you, look, you just imagine you are the father to the children. Do you always accede to your children's request? Do you always, yeah, you give let go, you go. You spoil the child and you will kill the child. Right now, you will have some restraint. You, uh, the parents will know what is good for you. The same thing with our heavenly father, he will know what is good for you. For each one of us. So sometimes the prayer may not be what you ask for. But we need to have the prayer daily to declare our dependence on him and to seek him and to drink from his throne of grace the living water which refreshes daily because remember we are not the dead sea we need to have grace the refreshing grace daily what has been past is past why have you done your grace the past that you have done using god's grace you have completed certain things forget about it move forward move forward because all this is got to god's glory it's not for our glory we do all things is for his glory there's nothing for us to boast about because whatever we do he's a mean is in the midst of it okay so we need to pray this is very very important we need to pray prayer is the heartbeat of every christian if you do not pray that means you are not you are not what we call, uh, if you do not pray, you forget about our Savior. You can forget our God because He is not in the midst. You see, the greatest blessing is what I originally said. The greatest blessing is not what you have, it's not what you enjoy and all these things, all those materialistic things. The greatest blessing where God lives within you. You have possession of Him. When you have possession of Him, He has possession of you. You allow him to dominate your mind, to dominate your whole being. Okay? Pray. And then remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. In two passages, in these two passages, we obey. We obey. Obedience is there. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If you don't obey and you don't trust, there's no miracles. You could not see the miracles because God wants us to make the first step of faith in any situation. He is a God of multiplication. He can do miracles, He can do wonders beyond human understanding. Never use our finite mind to judge God, the infinite mind He has, because His omnipresence and omnipotence is everywhere. Do you feel blessed to have such a God in your life? Are you willing to go for? Be courageous. Remember, He is with you. He is walking with you. He is in you. He is behind you. He is everywhere because He said that I will never forsake you and not leave you. And he, when He said that, you remember, our God never changed with the circumstances. It's always the same. It's the same yesterday, today, forever. So it's so blessed to have Jesus in our life. Obey and let yourself be transformed so that your life 
will be a multiplication for his glory. Bless her. Praise the Lord. All glory, all honor, all power belongs to the Lord. Let us bow down with a prayer. Thank you, Father Lord. Praise you, praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for your wonderful words, Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You are indeed in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for using me as your mouthpiece to speak for your words. I give you all glory, all honor, all power. And Lord Jesus, touch the hearts of all your people whom you love, whom you send oh, to, to, to this congregation and those in the house, in the Zoom, to listen to your words and let there be a transformation in their life, Lord Jesus. By your mighty power, Lord Jesus, let them walk in the light during this darkness, during this chaotic situation, during this, this uncertainty, worldwide uncertainty with all the misinformation, all those things, Lord Jesus. Lord, let us forget about it. Let us always focus upon you because you are the truth, the life, and the way, Lord Jesus. You are the truth. And let us always put on the full armor of God with, us, with the helmet of salvation, with the breastplate of righteousness at the belt of truth and with our, our feet, peace, because we are the peacemaker. Children of God are the peacemaker. And with the sword, the living word in our hand and the faith of uh, shield. Lord, let us become stronger each day in you as we exercise the faith that you've given to us because you are an example of the faith. Lord Jesus, you come 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 and revive us come and revive us come and speak to us and come and and help us to walk through whatever situation we are in lord jesus because you're all powerful almighty oh lord jesus praise you praise you lord jesus oh continue to protect each one of us continue to guide our step continue to bless us bless us with your gracious word from our mouth bless us with your heart for our compassion and blameless before you. And let us walk with your peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.